everybody, welcome to Pod Quest episode 116. Oh, right. September 20th, 2016, and we're recording on Skype again. Was that, was that enough uh, happiness? I guess so. Do I need more? No, nah, no, I think that was that was sufficient. Okay, all right. Uh, so, that's Walnut, and I'm Chris. Yep. And, uh, yeah, let's get started with the show. No, nah, let's not. Let's let's, re- let's redo that. Uh, no, nah, I'm good. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I think it needs a redo. No, it's good. Okay. So what did you do this week? Uh, I played D and D, and I played Magic: The Gathering. Different, different group, or did you guys already do this month's? We did this month's uh, on Saturday. I feel like you guys Saturday. just did last month's. Has it really? Been- um, well, last month we did it a little bit later in the month, so we were able to meet a little bit earlier this month. Ah. Um. Sense. Yeah, we did it last month. We did it. I think the. 20th or the 20 we did it the 27th in august oh shit you and know then, i just realized how late in the month this is too so i guess it's really not yeah. that it's not that late yeah but yeah we uh played some D and uh, our, our our epic dungeon master eric decided to screw us all and we woke up and all of our gear all of our weapons were gone i'm a bard my musical instruments are gone so i can't cast goddamn magic and uh, we're on a mysterious island that we eventually find a map, and it's a uh, it's a uh, Isla Nublar from Jurassic Park. Nice. Yeah, I as soon as as soon as we found the map and I looked at, it, I was like, I this is Jurassic Park. And he's like, What? What are you talking about? I'm like, This is I know this. I know this map. Like you can't fake me on this. I know this map. Did he have the John Williams score ready to go? Um, we we walked to a clearing. And he starts explaining the clearing, and it's the he had the scene queued up where uh, Grant and what's her name are there, and he's saying welcome to Jurassic Park, and the Brachiosaurus goes up and eats from the branch and drops down, and he had it almost timed perfectly to where as he's describing it, it goes up, eats the branch, and boom, drops down, nice. almost perfectly. It was like probably like three seconds off. From his description to him actually dropping down on the ground. Did he kill anybody um, else yet? No, but kind of. Well, yes and no. We wrote off. Um, wrote off. Uh, my sister's boyfriend's uh, character almost the, immediately because he hadn't shown up since he was actually supposed. To, he's never shown up at all. So he was given this epic introduction that never showed up. So we kind of wrote him off. And oh, yeah, um, wasn't he like? gonna come to one but then like something came up so he couldn't or whatever yeah, he, was, he was gonna come to one um but i think uh we we had no way of getting in contact with him because he deleted his facebook um and we don't have his number and then uh the next time he was gonna come or the next time we met it was like his birthday or something or no like he was going to come and then something happened and he just changed his plans and my sister was mad at him but it is what it is. So we wrote him off, and uh, one other person kind of got written off because he hasn't shown up in two weeks. It does his name start with an R? Yeah, Rusty was uh, was was written off because um, he hasn't been there in well not two weeks, two months, and it's more so just a you don't see him around. But I'm sure once he shows up next time, he's going to be like, all right, yeah, he was with you the whole time. He was just super stealth mode or something dumb like that. It's like that episode of Boy Meets World um, when they were gra- the graduation episode where Minkus pops up and he's just like, yeah, yeah, I was just over there on the other side of the hallway. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we, we wandered around Isla Nublar or Isla. I can never remember which one it's supposed to be. It's Isla Nublar, I is, believe. Is it Isla Nublar? Okay. Well, I mean, the word, it, like, island is island, and isle is isle, so I would assume it's isla, but, it, I mean, I guess it could be isla, but that just sounds I, weird. I thought is I thought isla, I-S-L-A, that it's pronounced isla, like, it's, because it's, like, a, like, a Hispanic Southern American island, so I don't know, um, but, yeah, so we, we got on there, we got some, some magic items, I finally can see in the dark now, I was the only character that couldn't see in the dark. I just, real quick, I just looked it up, and it is pronounced Isla. Okay. At least according right. to this website I went to for pronouncing words. Was, was it called Wikipedia? No, because I don't like the way that they do the pronunciations. It's literally pronouncednames.com. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we we found uh, a building that had a crate, and we were trying to get into the crate, 
and I couldn't actually open it, so I just, in anger, just threw it down, and it broke open, and we got flares, some some bandages, um, night vision goggles, and uh, uh, what else did we get? What else was in that box? I can't remember. There was something else in there that uh, we, we that we gave to Druton. And then as we were heading throughout the uh, the island, we were going to just different checkpoints that he had listed on the map. And each checkpoint had, like, different magical items and things like that. But nothing of super well use right now because we don't still have any equipment to fight with. That's uh, good. But, yeah, but, like, we have... We have a helmet that when you put on and think of something, it appears in front of you, but you're the only one that can see it. We have um, a ring, or we have what, I, what I've what i dubbed the master key or the skeleton key. We found just a key that was in the middle of a pedestal, and they were making, like, like different ones of them, like, like, uh, like replicas of them. I grabbed the master key, and then Anthony and uh, Druton just grabbed random keys. From there, and so I have hold of the master one. We have a ring. I can't remember what that does if we practice with it at all. Um, and then we found one that had some gold coins in it, but they were all replica gold coins. We couldn't find the actual original because it was uh, underwater. Oh, that's stupid. So everything, everything uh, filled up, and we couldn't. We don't have any detect magic stuff. Um, and then we ended off. It was like the end of the first night there. And we had all gotten our we- our items and set up camp inside a little little building so that we could hold out if anything were to come in. But no dinosaurs. Uh, oh, we we encountered uh, some dinosaurs, and Anthony's character is very um, off the wall. Uh, he's yeah, very you've, extravagant. You've mentioned we, that we, before. We've explained him a little bit, and um, he's having like a life crisis because he, he he lost all his gods and the people he used to worship. So now every time we play, he gets like a new title and he's a gnome. So that's like kind of necessary because gnomes, they get their name doesn't come from what they're given. Their name comes from their life experiences. So he is now dubbed himself Captain Barry Wine Bucklebeard because we were on a ship and he determined that he was going to be captain for a day. Um, He can make he has a spell called Goodberry that can make berries. So he makes wine out of it. And he wears a buckle in his beard, like a belt buckle in his beard. Nice. Uh, so as we're encountering these uh, these different dinosaurs, creatures, because we don't know they're dinosaurs, um, Eric gave him the opportunity, since he was so extravagant and the captain of this voyage he sees in his head, he gives him the opportunity to name everything. I don't have my booklet with me, but he named a, Brontius, or a Brachiosaurus uh, a Mr. Long Neckman. Um, he named uh, one of the spitters a flower-headed, uh, I can't remember, flower-headed neckman or something like that. Um, he named the, the compies, the little ones that, like, chomp at you. They're supposed to be, like, idiots, mostly. Yeah. Um, he named them after Vogel's uh, former character, because uh, his character was an idiot. Nice. So, now we've come to, uh, in-game, like, as characters, in-character, using the term Angus as a term of uh, insult. So, like, you just Angus that, or you guys are all just Angus. Was that Vogel's so, character? That was his character. It wasn't... He, he even spelled it wrong and everything. Um, did, I, I did, he get, did he get brought back in yet with a new character? No, he doesn't have a new character yet. And uh, hopefully he doesn't listen to this, because um, the next time I actually get to cast when he is around, and I use my, my ability, Vicious Mockery, I'm going to incorporate... Angus into it with him around. Nice. He'd be so mad, but yeah. So we got we met a few dinosaurs. We uh, there was a stampede at one point, and then a couple of velociraptors. But since we don't have any equipment, we can't really fight them. Uh, so we had to run. Anthony didn't want to run, but uh, Druton's character has uh, a ring that lets people walk on water. So I put the ring on. I picked Anthony up, and I ran across the water, and Druton just flew himself over. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, uh, it was it was a pretty good session. I was, I like I I can't express the look on my face when I fe- when I saw that map and I was just like, I I love this. I love this already. I know exactly what you're going for, kind of. Like I know the island, 
we're going to meet dinosaurs. This is Jurassic Park. So when we came to the stampede, I asked him first thing right away. I was like, is there a log that we can climb under? And he's like, no, it's not going that far into it. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I was hoping to see like a T-Rex and have to climb under it with a T-Rex stampeding over us as well or something like that. Just like in the first one. Um, but yeah, that was that was essentially D&D. It was mostly story driven and exploratory stuff because we don't have equipment so we can't really fight anything. Yeah, that makes so, sense. We're just trying to stay safe. Are you the only um, spellcaster that's regulated to an item in order to cast? No, every spellcaster has an item that they need to cast. Um, but it's dependent on the spellcaster and the spell itself. For instance, I have um, I have spells where if I had the specific material I, it asked for, I could spell it. I could use the spell. But as a bard, I don't need the item unless it has a monetary value if I have my musical instrument. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so if, like, it needs a tuft of, of wolf fur, and I have a tuft of wolf fur, I can cast it. Okay, yeah, I didn't but, know if, like, you know, you, I didn't know if, like, say, like, because you're a bard, you always needed an instrument to cast anything, but, like, isn't Drew, like, a sorcerer or something? Yeah, Drew's a sorcerer, and he has a, um, a medallion that he wears around his neck. Okay, yeah. And that, like, that's his focus, and if he doesn't have the focus, he can't cast spells. Yeah, that's what I was Unless sure, he right? has the material possessions. Yeah, I didn't know if, like, he needed, like, you know, that item, or he had to have a staff in order to cast anything, or, you know. Yeah. And, like, um, this type of staff let him cast fire magic, but this one let him cast, you know, ice magic or whatever. There's, uh, what is it? The wizards, which seem really neat, because you, 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 uh, you get a book. The wizard has a spell book. And if you lose your spell book, you cannot cast at all, because all your spells are in your book. I guess until you find a new book. You have to you have to get a new book and then prepare spells in that book. So if I were a wizard and I found a scroll that has a spell, I could copy that scroll onto my into my book and then I have that spell. Um, but a, as you level up, you learn different spells as well. But if you lose your book, yeah, once you find a new book and then spend the time and the money to learn the new spells, you you get your you won't you won't be able to cast until then. So it's. It's pretty interesting how they play some of that stuff. Yeah, so that that's actually kind of neat, but also really shitty if, like, something like this situation happens where, like, you guys wake up and just all your shit's gone. Yeah, it can, uh, it can be ridiculous sometimes. Um, and then there's, like, the clerics, their focus is usually, uh, like, or uh, not usually, but Vogel's focus was his shield. So if he lost his shield, he would not be able to cast. Um, and things like that. I'd have to read more up on the characters, uh, to, to be able to give you full information on that stuff. Um, but besides d and I did also play my first ever match of, uh, Magic the Gathering. I feel like that was a mistake. Like, that just yeah, seemed, not because it's, not because, like, it's a bad game, but more because that just seems to be, like, you know, maybe taking you down a path you don't want to go. Oh, I, I, I didn't want to buy them. I, I bought them on a whim. I bought the cards because uh, I thought I had cards, and I probably still do. I just couldn't find them. Uh, so we went to the card shop in Westmont next to Franco's, and they had four um, four starter decks in there. So and there was four of us, so we each bought a starter deck, and uh, we played a couple. Of ma- we played one uh, four person free for all match, and then we played uh, just one on one matches with with each other. Uh, it's fun. It's cool. It's there's a lot to like, a lot going on at, at a lot of times. It was a really dumb idea for us to do a four player free for all for two of us because it was my first match and another person's first match. Oh, good. Instead of like, instead of taking the time to teach us one on one, it's let's throw you into the fray and we'll teach you as you go. I didn't even know and you the, could play that game like four versus. Four. You can go uh, max six. Yeah, I didn't. Re- I've never played Magic before. It was, it was always one of those things where, like, I know of it, but it's always just there's a little too much going on, and I was never huge on the like collectible card stuff. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I get it. It's and it's like it's not really something I, I'm probably gonna get too far into. I would, I might, if I were to go get more cards, I'd keep going to that card shop in Westmont. They had a box of like a thousand plus cards for like seventeen dollars. Wow. So um, I, if I if I were to buy more cards, I would go and I would buy that. Yeah. I wouldn't buy new booster packs or anything. 
maybe I would buy the occasional starter deck or whatever. But if I were to get into it, I would just buy the box of a thousand cards and make my deck from that. But the deck that they gave me, or that that came with it, the starter deck that came with it, that I had was pretty good because it was a uh, a human undead deck, and um, I had essentially I had four four cards, three or four cards where every time if that ca- if that card was on field every time a card went from on field to the graveyard pretty much every time it died um you would get plus 1 to both attack and defense so i had w- i had two of them that were humans and they started at one attack one defense and then i had one of at least one of them that was three attack two defense so they and they would just keep going i had one at one point that was 10 attack 10 defense at one point and I went to go attack somebody, and they just used a, a murder card that just straight up said, you kill this monster that's attacking you. Nice. So then I was like, well, shit, now I can't do anything. And it just, the four verse four, or the four person free for all thing sucked because no one was attacking. No one was doing anything. The one dude that was brand new, he was like, I, I don't want to attack. Like, why not? Well, people can do stuff to me. Like, yeah, but if it's one on one, people can still do stuff to you. Just attack. It's like, no, I don't want to. I'm like, but the more you attack, the more likely you're going to kill their monsters and be able to do more damage afterwards. And he just he wasn't getting it. English is his second language as well, so it, it there might have been like a little language barrier in that. Yeah. But he just it wasn't fun the four, four person free for all. It took three, two and a half, three hours to do. Holy shit. Yeah, because they were stopping and explaining. And then, and then we played the one-on-ones, and the one group got through their matches. The, the, the one group got through their match, and then we're halfway through another by the time me and the other dude got done our first match. It's like... No, was it, was it two people that it. knew how to play, and then the two people that didn't know how to play doing the one-on-ones? No, it was uh, the two people that knew how to play did one, and then, yeah, me and the other guy did the other. The, me and the guy that didn't know how to play. And I was pretty much explaining to him, like, you should do, like, there were times he would play a card. He's like, I'm going to do this. I'm like, no, you're not going to do that. He's like, why? I'm like, you're going to do this instead, and that'll do more damage to me. And he's yeah, like, it's almost one of those things where it would have made more sense for, like, the two people that knew how to play to play against each of you once. Well, this way, like, the, yeah, the thing about that, though, is they were using other decks and not the starter decks. They were using decks that they already had made that are near impossible to beat. And I was just like, that's not fun. Yeah, I'm not. I have I have 50 cards. That's all I have right now. I'm not playing against your deck that's near impossible to beat unless you have a one specific card because I don't have that specific card. But what if you did? What if it's like Yu-Gi-Oh! and you just have to rely on the heart of the cards? Oh, I relied on the heart of the cards. And my second match, I killed the uh, the other guy by sacrificing my own monster. Good job. I had a, um, a card where it's every time I attack somebody, the person defending takes one damage, and I heal one damage for each attack. So if I were to attack them with three monsters... I believe it's each attack. It might just be each turn... I'd have to double check, but it's if I were to attack them, they would take one damage. And if it's with each monster, if I were to attack them with three monsters, they would take three damage and I would regain three health. Well, I had two of those cards in play. So every turn, I had cards where I would summon it and it would summon a plus or it would summon a one defense, one attack um, flying monster. And I would just use that fly that like crap monster that they would always defend against that they wouldn't be able to kill me, but I wouldn't be able to kill them type of thing. I would, or like, I would, they would be able to kill my monster, but it wouldn't hurt me. And they would still get the two hits, the two damage, and I would still regain the two health. I think we ended the match, I was at 20 health, which is what you start at, and they were at zero, because I just kept going back up. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was pretty good. The, the first match, the other thing about it is they shuffled weird, and I didn't like that about it. And I think if they had shuffled properly, it might have been a little bit faster. Because what they did, since it's a starter deck and you want to have... This is everything they said to me. Since it's a starter deck, you want to have an even distribution of everything. You separate all your cards through between all your colors. So your different land types, your 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 white and your blacks. is That's what I have, white and black. 
So it's you separate your white land cards, your black land cards, then you separate your white monsters, your black monsters, your white magics, your black magic. And then every then you grab a land, grab the same color monster, the same color magic, go to the next land, but alternate it to, for the other color. So like if you start with black, you go black, 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 white, 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 until you have have it evenly distributed. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it as I'm dropping my cards down. They place the cards in the decks from weakest to strongest. So if you're placing the card down just from bottom top of the bottom of the deck down, you're picking up your strongest cards. So everybody has their first hand and they all have their strongest cards with one or two magic land types in there. I'm like, this is this is dumb. Like I shuffled. I shuffled. I'm like, I'm not doing this. They're like, why? I'm like, this is not you need to shuffle. This is not shuffling because you know what's coming up. You know every four or five cards, you're going to get a land card. That's not how you play this game. Yeah, that doesn't seem like fun. It's not random enough. You need to shuffle. And so the next match, I was like, I will play you guys again if you shuffle properly. And they were like, well, we only shuffle that for new decks. I'm like, I don't don't care. Shuffle properly forever. It's fine if you want to do that, but shuffle afterward. Don't just go right into playing with, with it like that. Uh, it was it was dumb. Yeah, that, hated it. That does seem real. That, that just seems shitty. Like it was, and I even brought it up to them like midway through. I'm like, you know, you guys have all your heart- strongest cards out right now. You realize that, right? And they're like, why? What are you saying? I'm like, well, it, this is how they placed in. So when you pick them back up, you have all your strongest cards out. But my third card that I played ended up being my strongest card. I didn't need to do your fancy shuffling. I just shuffled. And I I had an even distribution. I had I had I think I had seven magic or seven land types out, which is your energies essentially. I had seven of them out, and I'm like, that's that's really all I need to summon things and cast magic. Any more than that is just it's it's cake. Like it was just it was ridiculous. I hated it. But and I the the two experienced players they they actually lost first. And then it became to me and the other guy. And the only reason he beat me is because he had all his strongest cards out because he refused to attack and would just defend. Huh. And and most of us decided to not attack him because he was getting upset that we were attacking him because we could. Because if you have a flying card, so my 1-1 one, one flyers, if you have them out and they don't have a character that has reach or flying themselves, they can't defend against you so you could keep attacking them. So if I had six 1-1 one, one flyers and I attacked him with all six and he didn't ever reach, I would do six damage to him right then and there. And he was getting upset that we were attacking him because he was the only one that we could really hurt and not have to worry about, like, not... Uh, we didn't have to worry about losing enemies or losing our monsters. Is it one of those games where, like, you have a finite amount of, like, hit points as, like, the player and... Yeah, it's it's kind of very similar to uh, Hearthstone. That's what that's actually was. Gonna yeah. Be so to Hearthstone where... was what twenty thousand, two thousand health or whatever. Or... I don't know because I think it goes up as you level up. But like basically, like you as the player have health, and then all your monsters have health, and they basically take the brunt of the damage. Yeah. Until there's yeah. nothing on the playing field, and then the attacks go right to you. Yeah. And... Unless you have abilities or things like yeah. that that say that you can um you can attack directly, um or if you have a monster that has trample, uh, and they were de- able to defeat the monster that de- that defended against them. They would trample that monster and deal the additional damage or the leftover damage to you. The the thing that's dumb about it though is your monsters heal at the end of combat. So if I dealt three points of damage to to the person across from me, and I didn't kill that monster. The next round of combat, that monster healed those three points of damage. So there's almost no so, point to attack unless you're actually going to kill them. Yeah, unless you know you can kill their monsters or you can avoid their monsters. There's no real point in attacking. Yeah, that's weird. It's 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 really weird. It's I, it's fun. It's a fun game, but it's just like it. Why why does your monster heal it like at the end of your combat? I want to read into the rules because there wasn't an actual an actual rule book in the starter box, and I think we did some things wrong. Like uh, for instance, I bet you they heal at the beginning of every round of your turn and not at the end of every combat session. Yeah, so you know what, those, bet, 
the two guys that knew what they were doing might just have like you know the rules that they just play with because it's not like they, yeah they don't have to follow like the officials they're not playing in yeah like they said that they do do official rules but they might have misinterpreted rules and things like that <laughs> i think they've changed it like over the years too kind of like the way D D has where like as different like versions of the cards come out they they probably update this and health yeah so i know like apparently like now like there's a lot of cards from like the early versions of the game that like you're not even allowed to use in competition like they're uh, yeah. they're yeah, illegal just... to use in competition all those card games do that too yeah I, don't, I know like the pokemon cards did the same thing like you can't use your original cards if you're playing in any sort of tournament yeah which is lame like what if you if you got a charizard you should be able to use your fucking charizard yeah exactly well it's like, like in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, you can't use Monster Reborn in combat anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, in, in, in uh, yeah, what's it called? In, uh, in tournament play, the Monster Reborn card is a, a forbidden card. You are not allowed to use that. I, I have like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards somewhere still. Oh, I, I'm looking at mine right now. They're right in front of me. I think they're just I in should, the closet next <laughs> I should bring them next time we want to do one of those magic nights that they did. Um... But yeah, it's it's really dumb because it's like like just like Exodia, it was a forbidden set. Yeah. In tournament play, you're not allowed to use Exodia. That's what that fucking like that. thing was called. I was as you're talking about magic, I'm trying to remember what that fucking um, monster was called, and I just I was drawing a complete blank. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about my week. I don't know. No games or anything, or video games, I should say. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I've just I haven't really wanted to play video games. It's it's well no it's not that I haven't wanted to play video games I haven't really thought of any video games I want to play that I own yeah like I'm kind of in that same place like well kind of like I want to play games but I can't decide what game I want to play because I want to try yeah. and like I like I want to get through games that I I knew I was you know a decent way into but just like stop playing for one reason yeah. or another like I was talking about this with Drew last week like I beat um Lego Marvel Avengers and something and Ratchet and Clank last week yeah. And it was one of those, like, I knew I was fairly far along in both of those, so, you know, why not finish them up? And I've got, I've got like, a few other games that are like that, and I just don't know which ones I want to do. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, like, there's just, I don't, I don't, like, yeah, kind of like that. Like, I just, I don't know what I want to play, or, like, when I sit down and I turn on my PlayStation uh, while I'm getting, like, e- eating food or whatever, instead of playing or I'll watch something. And then when I'm done watching something, I'm done eating, it's like... Well, do I want to actually play something, or do I want to just keep watching stuff? And it gets a little tougher now, too, because all the shows are coming back. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gotham came back yesterday, so I'll be watching that at some point tonight. Oh, fuck, you didn't get to watch it yet. That's right, you don't actually have cable. Yeah, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. starts back up tonight, so I'll watch that tomorrow. Um, I might get a PlayStation TV, whatever. The View, um, I think it's the called. The View, yeah, I might get that come the end of October. Nice. So that this way I can watch um, uh, the CW Walking stuff Dead and Walking, Walking Dead. Dead live. Like, see, everything's on Hulu. Everything will be on Hulu tomorrow. It just it, it goes up the, ne- the next day, right? It goes up the next day, whereas PS View goes up live that day. So I might I might just cave in, get PS View for two months, drop it when the uh, mid-season premiere, pick it back up when it comes back. Yeah, that makes sense. And, the, and do the same thing I'd like. That's what I what I'm going to be doing with Game of Thrones. When Game of Thrones comes back, I'll get HBO now, and then for and now it's only going to be two months because it's only eight episodes, seven or eight episodes. Once it's done, drop it. Then I don't need it anymore. Don't your parents have HBO? Uh, maybe. I don't know. So I don't... do they have they have FiOS, don't they? They have Comcast. Oh, they do. I thought they switched for some reason. So they've they've switched so many times. Okay, but maybe I'm just thinking one of the times they switch back. Um, if they have HBO. Um, you can, and that they'll either set you up an account on their account or, um, you know, just give you their username and password. You can yeah. download the HBO Go app and yeah, use that with their account, save yourself a little money. That's probably what I'll do too. I don't know. It's, um, I mean with HBO or with Game of Thrones, I, um, I give my account out to somebody else cause they give me their account to MLB, uh, dot com. So they're spending like 300 bucks. Oh shit! I'm only spending like thirty bucks. Yeah, I guess that that works itself out. Yeah, so it's like I'd I'd rather you know what I'll spend the thirty bucks and and let them have it for two months. Dude, Who knows? 
I, I I'm just still looking for uh, looking around at, at pricing for these cable things though. Yeah, I think doesn't View do like packages? View like... has three packages, and the cheapest one, which has everything I want except BBC, because BBC's not on anything anymore. The cheapest one is like fifty bucks, I think. I or you can I... do like a la carte, right? Where it's like oh, uh, that station. is that's uh, what's the thing on the P- on the Xbox One? Um. I can't remember what it's called. I was looking at it. Uh, Sling. Sling is a la carte. I thought I thought PS View let you do a la carte too, or maybe they were planning on it at some point. Uh, unless it's unless it's new, I don't think so. Yeah, you ought to check because I could have sworn that I saw something about like something like that, where like you you could pick and choose what station, or it could have just been really bad marketing. That's always possible too. It, it could have been like the last I checked, it was uh the the cheapest rate got pretty much everything I wanted. And honestly, I've been considering doing it just for sports ball, because um, I think there's some way to watch some sports ball on there, as long as it's on just regular TV so, channels. Apparently, because I, I was actually um, the guy I work with, he doesn't have cable either. Like he, he does like the same thing. He's got like Hulu, Netflix, like all that shit. Um, yeah. Local games are blacked out on on a lot of those apps, unless you pay for like the MLB thing, where it's like you know three hundred dollars. So like yeah, you get to watch football, but you wouldn't get to watch the Eagles. Uh, I can get Red Zone for thirty nine ninety nine for the season. Yeah, and that gives you all the games, doesn't it, including local? Yeah. Well, it's NFL Network is available on PlayStation View, and Red Zone, which is a different channel, is thirty nine ninety nine for the season. Forty bucks for the season. That's not that bad, actually. Yeah, no, it's really not. I mean, I would just verify that local games are included and not blacked out, because. Like, I know you do fantasy football, but I'm sure, like, if it comes to watching a full game, you want to watch the Eagles and not necessarily, you know, like, the Packers or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, but if I have re- if I do the red zone, it'll show me everything anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's 60, do- 60 plus channels for 40 bucks. It's 39.99 right now. Yeah, that's, not, um, that's really not bad. Um, no, not at all. Man, I, I don't think I, I mentioned this to you. Um, micro- like, the Microsoft Points thing that I, that I always talk about to, like, get free Hulu. Yeah. Mine, like glitched or something and i currently have enough for like almost the months of nice yeah like i went from like i had enough for like six months or so to enough for almost 60 like and it took it took me by surprise because like i was looking at that number i'm like that number looks way too big for what it was and like i yeah i I went over and like i did the math real quick i'm just like yeah no i should not have that many months of television but i'll take it thanks yeah nice that's 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 sweet yeah um I don't use Hulu a lot because, I mean, like, I pay for Comcast, but it's nice to have it and not have to pay for it when it's like, I just want to watch one show. Yeah, there's actually uh, a couple of movies I want that aren't on Netflix. I need to check Hulu to see if they're on. Hulu and Amazon, buddy. Yeah, I could check Amazon, too. I keep forgetting I have that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you have it. You might as well use it. Yeah. And even then, like, like yeah, the rentals on there kind of suck because they are, like, four bucks. But at the same time, it's like... There's not a whole lot of other option for that other than just buying the DVDs a lot of times unless it's a brand new movie that's still in Redbox. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if I just want to watch something once, like we used to pay like four or five bucks to rent from like Blockbuster and shit. So what's the difference of paying it for something now? It's better. Like if you don't want to own it, you know? Yeah. But the core package has NFL Network on PlayStation View. They have ESPN News and they have regular ESPN. The access package, which is the lowest, has ESPN. And ESPN too, so I don't know. I'd probably, I, I might just try the free trial now. I'm, I think it's a week. Yeah, why not? Seven day free trial. Try it out and <coughs> maybe start it on Sunday. Oh, uh, this way you start it right when they. Or on. no, I'd, I'd probably wait until next week because I'm not going to be home this Sunday. But yeah, I'd figure it out. But oh, standalone. There we go. See what they got. Uh, Showtime Machinima, Fox Soccer Plus. There you go. You can get in the Epics. soccer. Fox Soccer Plus for twenty nine or for twelve ninety nine additional a month. If you're a PlayStation Plus person, Machinima for one ninety nine a month. Epics and Showtime eleven forty nine a month. That's if you have PlayStation Plus. I know you can. I think it's it's either Stars or Showtime or both. Like you can add to your Amazon or Hulu accounts too. Uh yeah, it's Hulu I believe. Well no, they they both both services have it, but I'm not sure if they're different stations like i think hulu has showtime and maybe amazon has stars or vice yeah. versa so i know you can add it's like an extra 4.99 a month and you can add like access yeah um but i guess keeping with television um and spe- especially because you have who um 
you should check out the show, The Path. The Path? Yeah, it's, um, you watched Breaking Bad, right? No. Oh, I thought you did. Well, it's got Aaron Paul, Breaking Bad. Okay. And, um, a few other people. Did you ever watch the show Hannibal? Nope. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> one of the other main characters from Hannibal, um, like, a, a lot of the cast is, like, has been on other TV series as in, like, main roles. Um, yeah. But it's Aaron Paul's character, his wife, and his two kids belong to, like, a cult. Um, oh, I've, I've seen that. I've seen, like, trailers or something before. Yeah, and it's, like, it's very, you can tell it's very loosely kind of directed at, or it seems very loosely directed at Scientology, like, to an extent. Um, yeah. But, like, where, like, you have, apparently it's a very large cult, and they just call it a movie. You have a lot of people around the country that are just part of it that don't aren't, like, real into it. But then, like, their family is, like, one of the, like, main families in it, apparently. So, you know, they work at the compound in New York and everything. And just, it's a really interesting show. I was telling Drew about it last week, too. Um, I, we had finished it, like, right before, like, the, I think we finished it Monday when we recorded Tuesday or something like that. Um, yeah. And then the other show that, I was, that I've been watching on Hulu is that um, 11.22.63. Yeah, I've, I've wanted to check that out. I thought about it. Way different than I thought it was going to be. Really fucking cool, though. Yeah. Like, it's got this, like, you know, it's like the time travel and all, right? Yeah. So the way, the rules and the way that they work the time travel is really kind of interesting. It's it's one of those, like, he he went back to potentially stop the murder of JFK. That's all trailers and all. Yeah. But he can only go back to one specific day, and then he just has to stay there for as long as it takes for him to get to the stopping the murder. Yeah. Um, like, and that's up to the murder. And anytime he goes back to the present day, only two minutes have passed in present day. Even it, like he could be there for two years and comes back through the portal thing. Two minutes have gone by for everybody, like where he's from. Um, it's crazy. But then as soon as he, if he goes back through it again, he's back where he's. So like every time he goes through it, it's like October 19th. And he, okay. he could stay back there until 1969 and then come back again. And when he to like go again. Same date in 1960, same exact minute and everything. It's like 11 o'clock in the afternoon, 1960 something October, um, and like that you can you can make changes. Like, he goes in and he carves like initials on a tree in 1960, and then comes back and looks at the tree in 2016, and the initials are carved. But then when yeah. he when he goes back to 1960 again, the initials disappear in the present day because technically he's like reset time. Yeah. So it's like it's really weird and interesting, and it's based on a Stephen King book. So yeah, I, I've I've heard that. I've I have wanted to watch that. Yeah, the best part it's so it's based on a Stephen King book. It's produced by J.J. Abrams, and it's starring James Franco. Yeah, that's right. It is Franco, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just it's kind of like all over the place. We not a, not a lot of um solar flare or whatever they're uh, sun glare, you know, lens flare. There you go, lens flare. That's the fucking word I was trying to get to. Yeah, solar solar flare. Yeah, I get you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, if you just need something to like pop on, it's it's a good show. It's better than a lot of the shit that's on TV anyway. Well, you you and Eric would be happy with me because yesterday when I was trying to figure out what to watch while cooking dinner, I turned on Parks and Rec. Nice. Yeah, so I watched like the first three episodes of Parks and Rec. All right. So I don't know if either of them have said it before. The first season isn't. Oh, it's it's still good. I I was laughing. So, it had I mean, me laughing. It's not bad, but honestly, like, those first six episodes that, like, the first season is only six episodes, they're kind of a struggle compared to the rest of the series. Like, they yeah. have their moments and all, but it's one of those, like, the characters don't quite feel natural or anything. Everything's kind of forced. And some of the characters are just fundamentally different than they end up being, like, going forward. Well, I just love, because I know um, Andy and uh, Aubrey Plaza's character. April. April. And Andy and April get together. But I just love that, like, right now he's with uh, Renita Jones' character. And uh, what's her name? Ann Perkins. Yeah, he he's with her right now instead of April. But then the end of April, I, uh, does she stay a main character in the series? Who? Uh, Ann. Yeah, yeah, she is there until the second to last season. That's got to be awkward. Or did they just write, rewrite that differently? Oh, no, no, no. Like, they, they, they totally broke up and everything, I think. Since one and two. Okay. It's great, though. It's it's so great. Because, I mean, right now, Chris Pratt, he's just, he's got two broken legs because he fell in the same pit twice. Yeah. Um. Next year, I mean, this isn't really a spoiler. Next, the next season, he's living in the pit for a while. <laughs> because Anne breaks up with him, so he has no place to go, so he just lives in there. But, like, <laughs> yeah. 
he 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 basically goes the furthest in the course of the series. Like he goes from you know two broken legs living at his girlfriend's house to a pit to slowly kind of rising up to being like a functional adult human being. Yeah. Um. But like, so many of those characters on that show are just fantastic, and it is one of those things where the second season everything kind of starts. Everyone's kind of starts like getting into their own in the second season. Yeah. It's, it's really the third where everything sort of takes off because that's um. It's the end of season two is where they introduce uh, Chris and Ben, which are, um, I can't think of either of their fucking names. Now. Fuck. Um, Rob Lowe is, is Chris, and um, Ben is, oh, what is his fucking name? He was in um, he was in Step Brothers. He was Will Farrell's actual brother. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. I don't know his name, but I know who you're talking about. Um, God, I, don't, I don't know. Adam I Scott. don't think I've ever known Adam him. Scott's yeah, his name. Yeah. I like I, I knew his name because he's been in a bunch of stuff that I liked and I just I was drawing a complete fucking blank. Um, but yeah, they get introduced at the end of season two, and from there on out, it's just a great show. Okay. Probably yeah. one of the most satisfying final seasons of a show, and the the season six finale I think it was, is the best finale I have ever seen. Like of anything, like series season doesn't matter. I dude like it like I said what two weeks ago. It's gonna be tough for them to top the Scrubs series finale. Like I, that was probably the best series finale I've ever seen. Look, so the the season six finale, like no spoilers, could have easily been the series finale, and yeah. nobody would have cared. That like that's how good of a finale it was. It had like all the right callbacks to things from like not just like that season, from like the first season of the fucking show. They like called back to stuff in it. Like it was it was fucking perfect. And like the, the, yeah. the actual final season was really good too. Like like everything in the final season was great, but like that season six finale was that was probably the one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen. Yeah, but I'll see it. I'll see it eventually. Nature. I'm gonna watch that slower than I did Scrubs. I think I'm hoping at some by the end of this week, early next week, I'm gonna get back into fourteen and revitalize my want to play video games. So to be realistic, like I didn't expect to go through Parks and Rec as quickly as I did either. But, like, once you kind of get into it, it's one of those shows where you just you kind of want to just keep going because it is – you don't even realize that, like, episodes are, like, moving on just because they're so funny. Yeah. And, like, you have a few episodes that, you know, not as much humor, but then, like, just something ridiculous happens. Like the episode where Ron orders all the bacon and eggs. <laughs> or the, there, there's a season there, – there's one episode in one season where Andy's looking at a highlights magazine. And <laughs> he's drawn all over it. And he's like, and he turns it around to Ron and he goes, Look, I found all the difference. And Ron looks down and he's like, Son, those are two totally different pictures. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like I did get, and I think I, like I said, I watched the first three episodes. Yeah. And it just, it moved quick. Yeah. Like, it's, because it was a half hour show, so it's only 23 minutes. minutes yeah. 20 minutes. No, um, did you ever watch Community? I've seen the Dungeons and Dragons episode of Community. That's it. Um, I think that's on Hulu. It's on. Or, it should uh, be on Hulu. Yeah. It's not on Netflix. The first, I, I guess the first four seasons, five. I forget how many seasons were actually on television. Um, the actual on TV seasons were actually really good though. Um, the Community was on TV all the way through to the last season. The last season was the only one not on TV. That's what I mean. Like I don't remember if that was. I don't remember how many seasons they had. It was either five. I think it was five seasons total, maybe. I, I can I just can't <laughs> remember. But it was like. All their t- it was like all their TV seasons, and then that final season was on Yahoo. That final season was all right, but the ones, all the ones leading up to that were really good. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, not many characters leave Parks and Rec either. Like, they, it's a pretty solid staff all the way through, and you get like um, Donna and Jerry both kind of like grow. Like their role gets more and like bigger as like the seasons go on. So like right now they're just sort of those background characters that like get mentioned in there. But Donna, which one's Donna? The black lady. Oh, she hasn't even been on it yet. Oh, really? Yeah. And Jerry is the older white guy. I think he was mentioned. He was in the first episode because she had to forum, and he was there complaining about something. No, no, that wouldn't have been Jerry. I think it was. Because Jerry works in the parks department. Okay. Yeah, like Maybe Donna it wasn't Jerry then. Donna and Jerry are like two other people in the parks department. Um, they sit in like the larger open area, like where April is. Yeah. Because like Leslie and Tom share an office, and then Ron has his own office. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, w- w- they'll get introduced and then they're just kind of like extra characters that like are there regular, but like as the seasons go on, they're in it more and more. And I don't know if they're ever actually billed as starring, but they may as well be. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm glad you're actually watching that. It's a good show. Yeah, like I said, it was like I was I didn't know what to watch, and I had already watched At Midnight while cooking dinner, so I was like, eh, I'll watch. Well, no, At Midnight got like halfway through and then cut out. Oh, that sucks. I don't know why, but it cut out, and so I was like, eh, I'll watch Community then, or Parks and Rec then. Good choice. Um, but what about you? Did you, did you do anything this week? Um, well, I watched Gotham yesterday. Nice. Uh, it was it was good. I that show seems to get better, like as the seasons yeah. are going on. Yeah, that, that's, My, that's, I've told people that I was we, I was talking to told a Eric that, and he do, he just doesn't. Yeah, he's like I don't, I don't want to do. I I told a coworker at work this week. I was like, or today I told him I was like, yeah, it's season one start started off very slow, ended well. Season two picked up right where season one pretty much ended, and it was fantastic. Pretty it was great all the way through. Ended off really great. So hopefully they it's this season uh, keeps up with that and keeps going forward. Um, I I read somewhere that uh, they're probably going to bring Jerome back. Yeah, I, I read that too. Um, cool. Well, I mean they they already showed they can bring people back from the dead. So yeah, with superpowers <laughs> and 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 apparently um, he was in custody. His body was in custody at um, Indian Hill or whatever the place is called again. Oh, okay. That I, I hadn't heard, but I had read it. I don't think it was ever like mentioned, but I read it on like the wiki or something like that. Okay. So I don't know where they got that information. I'll double check the wiki, but um. But yeah, th- uh, this season started out pretty well. I mean, um, you know, Gordon's not a cop right now. Yeah. So like, he's just kind of in Gotham. Uh, the old the captain isn't really his biggest fan. Um, but they have there's meta humans. Like yeah. all the people that got off, got off the bus. Um, it's still kind of a bummer that uh, Fish Mooney's back because she's I don't she just doesn't fit the show. Like you know what I mean? Like her character just feels very out of place every scene. She like she's she's overacting or something. Like I don't even I don't even know if it's, if it's like the actress's fault or the writing or what. But like her character just does not seem to fit. Yeah, yeah. I I never liked her first season, and I I, just, I know I wasn't gonna like her at all the rest of the season. Yeah, like, like, I mean, she's, like, a good, like, menacing kind of character right now because she has got, like, the weird powers. But at the same time, it's just, like, she's not, like, the Penguin is compelling to watch. Like, even the Riddler was, like, cool to watch. She isn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's just, she's, uh, she's just not a captivating character for me. Like, they should have kept her dead. Yeah, and there, there's sort of a wonderful thing going on with, um, it's not that they're not all working together, but you have, um, the Penguin and, um, Oh, what's his name? Butch? Like, Fish Mooney's ex-bodyguard, who was then Penguins, who was then with, um, what's his name last season? His arm got cut off and all that fun shit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, the big guy. So Butch, it, yeah. Yeah, he, he was there with the rocket launcher at the end of last season. Yeah, yeah. that was so that it's, was awesome. It's Penguin, Butch, um, Tabitha's, um, Crazy Azriel dude's sister, and, um, Barbara. Like, those four all have, like, this, like, side plot going on. Okay. And they're four of the more interesting characters because they're all kind of fucking insane. Well, particularly Penguin and Barbara are fucking insane. Yeah. Um. But so like that's fun. But yeah. Otherwise, like it wasn't. It was a good opener. Um. I'm. I'm. St- I'm always. I've always been torn on like the Bruce stuff. Like some weeks it's cool and other weeks it just feels too much. This week was sort of like in the middle there. He had. He didn't have many scenes. His one scene was actually pretty badass. But then everything else wasn't great and i just feel bad for alfred but yeah overall like it, it was a good opener and i'm excited to see like where the rest of the season goes i forget what they're called they're calling i think they're calling this season mad city mad city okay yeah like you know how last season was like rise of the villains or whatever yeah 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 so this one is like mad city because basically like all the crazies from arkham and shit have superpowers now and are loose in the city yeah um so i found the thing it's uh, a corpse resembling Jerome's can be seen in a tube in Indian Hill on uh, the episode with uh, Mr. Freeze. A dead man feels no cold. Oh, okay. And I found the image, and yeah, I guess you could say that it looks like it. There's an image, uh, I don't know if I can link it to you. It doesn't really matter. But it's um, it shows a couple of bodies in tubes, and there's one facing away from the camera that's got red hair. It's And the hair goes up kind of like the way Jerome's did. So I think people are trying to say that that's his. Uh, but yeah, it's I, I like that show, and I hope it holds up. Yeah. Um, 
this season does look good. I haven't really watched too too much on it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like out of, from the season premiere, like I I liked like the route it was kind of going with everything. So we'll see if that you know keeps up. Um, but yeah, um, other than than that, like television stuff, uh, I got back in the Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. Which did you play that? Um, I played the demo or something that they had. I never actually got it, and when it was free, I didn't have ex- an active Xbox Live. Okay. Well, thing. I did something, and I forget what it. The, so there was a um one of the missions was point space thing. It was really fucking stupid. But when I finished it, it showed you on the leaderboard. Like you had had you had gotten a better score than I had. Yeah, yeah. It was probably from the uh, demo. Yeah. So I guess the demo was probably like mid game. Uh, uh, yeah. Pro- I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I can't remember. But like, it's a it's a really fun game. Other than the so they do these stupid fucking like. I, Hepcat or Hepcat, I forget what. Um, basic like they do these weird sort of tower defense base building bullshit things. Yeah, um, I I was in some of those. Yeah, I think there's four of them where the dude calls you and he's like, "I need some materials," and you gotta find like random bullshit around the town like lit paper and you yeah. give that to him, and then he's like, "All right, now we gotta wait till night, and then we're gonna turn these vats on, and they're gonna draw all the infected guys to us. So you're just gonna have to, you know." protect those vats and take them all out yeah and it's it's not fun and like the second one is where they introduce traps they traps and take them out and then i'm up to the third one and you have two vats to protect and it's like like i don't want to i actually stopped playing there because i don't want to do that mission because it's not fun at all yeah i remember those like if i wanted to do base building shit or tower defense like i would play one of those games like i play this game so i just want to run around grinding on rails shooting shit yeah and like that part of the game is great all the stupid story nonsense, great. At one point, there two char- the, your main character and a character he just helped are talking, and somebody else's voice kind of comes over the radio, and the girl goes, wait, how are we both hearing him if neither one of us are holding a phone? <laughs> and the, the, the guy on the phone says something like, science, and your main character just goes, hey, let's not poke holes in the way that we're delivering story to the player. Yeah. And then she goes, all right, fine. I'm gonna go back to the hideout, and I'll be—I'll have magically disappeared by the time uh, you gain control again. And he <laughs> goes, "Oh, all right, that's weird." And then, like, you get control, and she's gone. <laughs> so, like, they do a lot of like weird fourth wall breaking stuff, but it's just—it's fun. Yeah. And the weapons are like my favorite weapon is the fucking teddy bear can. Like the teddy bear can. Yeah. It's a TNT teddy. So it's a teddy bear that you fucking strap TNT to, and I think it's an upgrade to it actually, because I don't think the original one is is the gun. But yeah, it, it, you shoot a, a teddy bear strapped with TNT, and it just blows up anything it hits. Yeah. So you can just take out hordes of the OD with. It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sounds there, fun. There's other good guns in that game, but that's probably my favorite. Um, and then Batman Telltale series episode two, Children of Arkham, hit today. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I got that. Yeah. Included in my pass. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the passes Telltale sent out were season passes. Okay, yeah. So I didn't get to play that yet because I just I literally had gotten home 15 minutes before we started recording. Oh, that's um. Yeah. Yeah, I play I played through it. Um, it felt shorter than the first episode did, and I, I didn't dislike it. Like it was still fun and all, but it just it it wasn't as good as one either. Okay. Like I I don't know. Like there just wasn't enough kind of going on. I guess. Um, I think I was only Batman once. You have a choice at one point whether you want to go do something as Batman or as Bruce. Um, yeah, I picked Bruce for that, but aside from that, like, I'm pretty sure I was only in the bat suit one other time. Maybe okay, no, two. I was in the bat suit two other times, and the one was really short. So it's one of those like, like I get it's it's very much a Bruce Wayne story, but I thought the first episode had a much better balance, especially because like one of those Batman scenes was actually pretty long. Well, two of them were pretty long and drawn out, so you know you got to do a bunch of stuff. This was all. The few times that you were Batman, that there wasn't much to do. It was just kind of story, kind of move forward real quick, few quick time events, and you were done. Yeah. And like I did, I didn't even expect it to end when it did. Like episode one, I kind of saw the ending coming. I'm like, all right, this is getting to the climax, and you know, we're gonna finish this up, and ep- episode one will be over. This time, like episode two ended, I'm just like, really? Like that's it? But that was like an hour and forty five minutes. Like normally that those sucks. things are at least like two hours, doing some change. Um, and I'm, it, I don't know if it was just like my luck today or what but it was a little glitchy and stuff too like sound wasn't always working right at one point you have to do this little mini game where you triangulate um 
like a, sa- a cell phone signal, which they don't even actually triangulate, right? Like the way this fucking map works, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. But you basically are, you're remote control, you're looking at a map and remote controlling drones in like a hologram. And you're supposed to be steering the drones towards like a clicking sound. And you know, once the clicking sound is strongest, you hit A and that's like the point. The third one I got to, there was the sound didn't work. So there was no clicking sound. So I just had to move around the map hitting X until it went green. Uh, that might have just been a an issue with you. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know ahead of time if I don't know if that was actually a problem or if, you know, my game just bugged a little bit. But there were a few other times where, you know, um, like sound just some sound was there. But, you know, somebody comes in and slams their hands on a table and there's just nothing. So it just kind of, you know, it's weird. And um, a few times the music was actually too loud to hear the voices. Yeah. So, like, just stupid stuff. And then loading seemed a little bit longer and a little more frequent. Like, there were scenes where it would go to loading where it, I feel like it almost didn't need to. And the loading was so long that it kind of pulled back from the story. Because, like, something major just happened. You're about to jump in and do something, and it goes to, like, a 10, 10 15 second load screen. Yeah. And that just kind of, like, breaks that flow they had. Um, otherwise, the only other thing was, like, the dialogue in this one felt a little weak compared to the first one. Like, there was one specific scene where you're talking to Harvey on the phone, and money's brought up. And it just, the, the whole, like, exchange just felt super forced and weird between, like, the character. Like, whereas, like, episode one, everything just seemed to, you know, flow really nicely together in it. Yeah, well, also remember, in at, at the end of episode one, your, you, your uh, relationship with Harvey is, like, you, Harvey doesn't want to be seen with you, essentially, because of the whole, well, depending on your, probably, not depending on your choice with, uh... Falcone, but because of your whole instance at your house party with Falcone being there, he doesn't want to be your friend, so then it's kind of awkward between you two. It's like, well, he's asking for money, and it's like, well, you don't want to be seen with me. You don't want my money. So either you had a very different um, playthrough than I did, or you're misremembering. Because, like, in my playthrough, they are still friends. Um, Well, no, they're still friends. In in the opening, like, in the, like, the, the first, like, the little, like, recap sort of thing, like, it even has Bruce saying, like, um, even with everything that's going on, Harvey still isn't disting- distancing himself from me the way he should. So, like, well, in, maybe, in my playthrough, like, Harvey hasn't pulled back at all. He's still well, maybe right I, there I with I told him. him he should distance himself, so. Yeah, so that might have just been how, how your playthrough went. Because in mine, it, it does come to that where, like, you both kind of agree. Like, Harvey brings it up and you agree with it. But, like, that whole exchange feels forced not in the – they're trying to make it feel that way in the the acting just isn't that great in sort of way. Yeah. Like, maybe the di- like the dialogue – I think the dialogue itself just wasn't written as well for that scene, and the actors didn't know how to convey it as well. Um, yeah. I don't know what sort of – like, what the development cycle is these Telltale games either. I don't know if they're working on each episode as it's coming out, like, dialogue-wise. So I don't know if – in the last month they have had to try and get these guys in there to record all this stuff or not. Like if that's the case, you know, I could understand things kind of, you know, falls here and there, but it, if that's, if that's how it's going to play, I'd rather the, the game go like bi-monthly rather than monthly. I don't even know if monthly is their schedule. I just, first one came out beginning of August. This one's end of September. So who knows? Yeah. It was still enjoyable. Like I like where the story's going. You get a whole lot more of the story this time. Um, the villain is still obscured. Like I'm waiting for the Joker to be introduced, but I really hope that they don't make the villain the Joker. If anything, he'll be the last. But I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see it being the big baddie isn't going to be the Joker, but the end all be all might end up being the Joker. If you get yeah. what I'm saying, like if the Joe, I would like the Joker to be inter- I think, we, I think we talked about this last time too. I'd like the Joker to be introduced in like the end of the last episode. Yeah. For episode two. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want them to just pull the Joker in because that's the thing to do. I like where they're going with the characters so far. You know, I kind of hopefully this does well enough the way where they get multiple seasons out of it the way The Walking Dead has, and we get to see you know, the, you know, Harvey go from like this potential mayor to two things and yeah. see more of because you you don't see a lot of meta humans in this yet. So like hopefully we start to see that sort of take place where like. The, the actual, like, super villains are rising in Gotham, basically. Yeah, and then, um, also, what's going on with, uh, Penguin, and I'm sure they'll throw in, uh, I don't even remember if they mentioned Nigma in the first 
uh, episode. No, Riddler wasn't in that at all, but Peng- Penguin is in this one again. Um, yeah, yeah. He's in a he's in a couple scenes of it. So like he's sort of a a, a moving plot villain sort of deal. Um, yeah. But there's somebody above him that, that that gets mentioned too that we just don't know who it is yet. Okay. That's why I'm hoping it doesn't just end up being fucking Joker. It could be Marone. Marone? Isn't wasn't there always Falcone and Marone? Oh, Maroni, I think is their Maroni, name. Maroni, yeah. So that could be something as well because you took care of Falcone. Maybe, but at the same time, I was I don't want to spoil anything in the story. I don't see that I don't think that's the way that they're going. But what they're doing with that whole like Bruce is really fucking cool. I do like that. Cause it's very different from anything you ever get in Batman. Yeah. So at least like the story itself is really good. It's just kind of the way it was presented this time sort of fell a little flat. But yeah, well, you can't always have a yeah. masterpiece, I guess. They've got three, and you know these games are, are weird too because you are playing just you know little bits of them as they release. Yeah. Them. I'm sure if if I had waited for all of this to come out before I picked it up, I might have had just a completely different experience because I would have just sort of powered through the whole like six hours, seven hours of it in one go. Yeah. Um, which I might do once the whole thing's out is just go back and replay the whole thing just to oh, kind of get the story will. all at once. I definitely will. Totally, definitely will. Um, uh, but yeah, other than that, I read a bunch of comics, nothing was great, really, you know, Marvel's not very good anymore, um, <laughs> like, well, they just, they do too many fucking events, like, there's like a four month gap between events now, because they keep getting delayed, so like, yeah. Civil War is not gonna end until, like, Christmas, I think, so, by the time Civil War is over, we'll have, you know, four months before they're on the road to the next fucking terrible event, so it's just, yeah. it just kinda ruins all the books, um, DC's cool, though. I really like Rebirth. Um, they're doing neat stuff. The Wonder Woman story is really cool, because you get, like, her origin and a present-day thing. And then okay. there's some other books that are good over there, too. Um, even Superman's actually good. I'd rather re- read Superman right now than most of the fucking Marvel books that they're putting out. You, you can just stop talking now. I'll talk for the rest of the time. Why? So, be- because you'd rather read Superman. That's how bad Marvel is right now. Then, then read something that's not Marvel or Superman. Actually, uh, um, the Rebirth stuff that they did with Superman is cool just because it's the two Superman books aren't all Superman. So Action Comics is actually a lot of Lex, which Lex Luthor okay. is an interesting character. Um, yeah. Especially the, the this version of him because he, he's – I can't tell if he's like a villain tr- trying to fuck with everybody that he's a hero or if he's actually trying to be a hero but he's still like a, just an immoral asshole at the same time. So, yeah. like, he is Superman right now. He doesn't have powers. He has, like, a suit that he had the... He bas- he took over Apocalypse, where Dead's Dark Side was ruled. Yeah. And had them build him a, a suit that would, that would make him... Like, better than, like, this robot suit that you always see Lex Luthor in. Like, this is a better version of that. And he put the Superman symbol on it, and he stole the Dead Superman's cape. Okay. Wh- he didn't even steal it. He, the Daily Planet had it, so he bought the Daily Planet and fucking took the cape because he then owned it. Because why the fuck not? Um, but, the, and then the other Superman book is, uh, it's the pre-New 52 Superman, so it's the one that people liked, and he's got, like, the kid and all, and that, that one's just a more interesting take on the character, because he's invulnerable, but he has a wife and kid that aren't. Yeah. So you have, like, that whole dynamic going on, where he doesn't want to, he doesn't necessarily want to be Superman, but the world needs a Superman. Like, he gave it up because there was already a Superman there. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's not the best book out there, but it's better than, you know the bullshit that Marvel keeps putting out for, like, Civil War and garbage. Maybe maybe read a real book? I do. I read lots of real books. I'm reading a book right now called Black Rain. Um, that doesn't sound interesting at all. It was, uh... So, Amazon... You actually probably get this, too. Um, not that you'd probably... Just, you don't have a Kindle, I guess. Um, well, you could probably read it on, like, your iPad. Um, every month, they release six books for, uh, for Prime users that you can pick one for free. Okay. So this was, like, a free book, like, two months ago or something like that. It's, like... Yeah. It's set in, like, a near-future world where um, we perfected AI and, like, grow people, basically. Okay. Um, and the people are called Synthates. I think I'm pronouncing that correct. And they're basically just used for, like, slavery. You know, they, they make different classes of them. You have, like, worker class, which are, you know, cooks and nannies and factory workers and bullshit like that. Yeah. And then you have, like, social class, which are, like, men and women that are made to basically look perfect. Um. And they're used for, like, sex and shit like that. <laughs> okay. And um, then you have guard classes, which are, like, they're used for, you know, guarding people and military. And um, they do this crazy bullshit where 
they take these things and like these things have a consciousness they're not just robots um like they feel pain and all and they put them into these games they call them where they just make them fight to the death like two giant teams in in different sets of historical battles like they've shown two so far one was this was a civil war battle and one was a revolutionary war battle and they dress them up like they're in in that time period and they they make the battlefield look like that and they give them authentic like time period weaponry and everything like that and they just make the two teams kill each other until only only one team is left standing yeah like it's kind of fucked up but it's an interesting book it's weird yeah like the whole thing's really weird and like these fucking like synthate things are like rebelling like some of them non-violently some of them violently and yeah it's interesting I, i'm like halfway through it right now but it's a book and it's it's nothing but words there's no pictures involved yeah <laughs> <laughs> um all right maybe that's a real book it's just one i i i i read i usually read like a real book every night. Uh, every night that's a lot of real books that's a lot of pages well I don't read the whole book every night, but like before okay. I go to bed, I usually read for like a half hour. Okay, that's 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 like three pages for me. Um, I it's I, I I don't know page because it's on the Kindle, so it doesn't tell you page. But um, depending on the book, it's probably at least a chapter of like if like a chapter's ten pages, let's say. Yeah, I, I'm a slow reader, so that that's half hour isn't long enough for me to read. Yeah, I can understand. That's, that's why I don't really like doing it that often. But I love I love reading books. But I hate the act of reading a book. Well, do, the thing that always happens with me is if it's not an interesting book, I get distracted, and then yeah, it does take me longer. Or if it's not oh, interesting, yeah. not even distracted. Like sometimes if it's just not interesting, I'll find myself either spacing out as I'm reading and then having to go back and read the same thing a few times. Oh, that used to always happen to me. Like when we had to do, I hated the summer reading. Me when too. When we had to do it in uh, elementary school and even high school, not because I hated reading. Because I was so easily distracted and the books that we had to read were so boring that I would not be able to get through it. So I would start reading chapter one and my mom would be like, you have to read a chapter a day for this and you have to get it done. So I would start reading on chapter one and Eric would get through his book like that, like in a snap of a finger because he would cheat. And my sister, she was always younger than us, so she had easy books to read that were actually kind of fun sometimes. So she would get through her stuff, and then they'd start watching TV and playing video games, and I'm like, I want to, this is so boring. So boring. Like, I remember I read, I can't even remember what the book was called, but it was probably high school, and I read the same page about a kid breaking his leg, and it was just the most boring description of a kid falling out of a tree and breaking his leg in my life. Nice. I, I think I gave up in that book, read the back of it, and then found a, a movie or something. Yeah. Or just, like, like uh, footnoted it. Because it was just, it was terrible. It sucked. I only ever did summer reading twice. Um, I did it in, I think, fifth or sixth grade and ninth grade. Um, well, it, it was nice because, like, first, like, once they introduced it all the way until sixth or seventh grade, you didn't have to do it. And then once you hit, like, seventh grade, you had to do it. Because they would, that would be a test grade for you for your first uh, marking period, and it's like, well, that that sucks. Yeah, like I did, I, I read The Hobbit like between eighth and ninth grade, and like that was the book for that year. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think my parents made me read like Johnny Tremaine, like fifth and sixth grade, because that was the book that year. And that yeah. book was fucking. It was. I did not enjoy that at all. Um, but the, the the Hobbit wasn't bad. It was just hard to get through. Told I I just don't really like Tolkien's works. Um, yeah. So it's the same way, like I don't I don't particularly like reading Stephen King. Like I just they're I like their the stories like in a manner of speaking, like their stories because even like the Lord of the Rings movies I can't really sit through. Um, but like I like the concepts of them and all. Yeah. But like their writing is just very slow paced. Yeah. Um. But yeah, every other year I just I didn't do it and I would just make shit up. And you usually get a passing grade on like the test or whatever they they had you take. Um, yeah. I think it was it was summer reading for eleventh grade where they we had to do something like creative, and I just um, I changed the words to a Green Day song and handed that in as my fucking report. Because hmm. like it had yeah. to, it had to be like like you had to either write a story or write a poem or write a song or whatever. yeah I never had like fun stuff like like I remember. Uh, I think it was freshman and a sophomore year. They were going to try and put me into core English class. 
and I read this book, and I go to do the core English class summer reading pamphlet, and one of them was pick 10 words that you don't know and look up the definition for it. I looked at my mom and said, Mom, I can't do this. Why? This is too hard. What? Pick 10 words you don't know? Why? Because I know all these goddamn words. <laughs> She's like, why are you going? Why? I'm like, well, they're putting me in the core math class or in the core English class. Why? Because of my score or something for whatever eighth grade. It was probably freshman year then for whatever eighth grade test we had to take. Oh, it says even on there you're not supposed to use that for placement. Yeah, because not every kid tests the same. Yeah, the so tests they... were fucking terrible. What's that? All those like yearly like standardized testing shits because they made yeah. you, you had to do the one between eighth and ninth grade and then, then we had to do the one between eleventh and twelfth grade. Yeah. And if you fail the eleventh grade one, you have to take that like extra class. Yeah, something like. And it was like I never because I remember I've seen my cousin with her son because he's uh he's not even old enough for I don't even know how old he is. But like she was worrying because the, he was he might have had to start taking standardized tests. She was freaking out because when she was in in school, she would always freak out about standardized tests. I and I'm like when when we had the the cat tests and and whatnot, I looked at him and I was like, I don't understand why we we have to take a week for this. This is all stuff I've learned. I didn't study a single lick of anything because this is all stuff we've learned. Does, yeah. We shouldn't have to do this. These things are so dumb. Yeah, I think I failed, like, the math section on the 11th grade test, and then they make you take, like, I had to take, like, the math prep class for that the following year for, like, half the year. Yeah, and, and then you had to retake, retake the it. test. And I'm like, God, this is bullshit. And I mean, it's kind of, it's Collingswood's fault, because, so, let's say it's kind of the same thing that happened to you. I, I tested badly in 6th grade going to 7th grade in math. So rather than putting me in, like, the normal math for that grade, they put me in, like, yeah. a step lower. Which then, yeah. by the time I got to ninth grade, I should have just gone right to algebra because my te- I tested like I w- I understood it fine like my grades in math were A's and D's, but instead they put me in pre-algebra. So then I was a I was a year behind everybody in math. So when eleventh grade came up, I was just in geometry and I had the teacher that didn't know how to fucking teach geometry. So like oh I was I was I was in geometry when when we had to take that and I passed. The math portion with flying colors because it was all stuff we've pre-learned by geometry. Yeah, and, and I just because what was it? I guess it was I had regular algebra in tenth grade and then geometry in eleventh. And at that point, I was just kind of like fed up because like I should have had algebra in ninth grade. Oh, and, I had I had algebra in ninth grade and then they put me into a core math class in tenth grade because I failed once and got D's all of freshman year because I refused to do homework. Yeah, I, I passed. I passed the class not doing a single lick of homework, but I it, I got these these and F's because I didn't do homework. That shows that I know how to do math. Yeah, exactly. But they they put me into a core math class. And I, that was the easiest easiest year of school in my life. And uh, come near the end of it because we had to test out at one point. So they had certain booklets that we needed to take to be able to test out of the core math class. Come the end of the year, I wasn't doing it because we had to take it home for homework, and I wasn't doing homework. I still refused to do homework. She's like, what's going on with you? I'm like, I was able to finish everything in class. I couldn't finish this in class, and I don't bring books home to do homework. I, I live a half-hour walk away. I'm not carrying my books home to do homework. Man, what a and bitch. I, hey, it's, I, 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 I stuck to it. I'm like, I'm not carrying my shit home. And then come senior year, since I could drive anyway, I carry. I didn't even look, go to my locker, and I still didn't do homework. <laughs> I had a study hall, and I still didn't do homework. Yeah, I never. I didn't really do homework either. And I mean, I only failed two. I failed three classes throughout all of high school. I failed environmental biology because the teacher actually ba- he graded us on art. Hmm. Like if your drawings didn't. Like, it was one of those things where, like, you know how most teachers, if they had you doing drawings, they would, you know, as long as you had things labeled correctly, you were good? Yeah. No, like, he based it on, if it didn't look exactly like the thing you were supposed to drawing, whether it was labeled correctly or not, you failed. That shouldn't, no. Yeah, so, like, I failed that class. He actually told me once, I, I handed in a project, and he told me that um, I plagiarized when mm-hmm. I knew full out impossible, because I made up every fucking fact I wrote on the page. <laughs> Like, I didn't look up anything. I just, I fucking just made shit up. Cause I, at that point, I just didn't give a shit because that class was so bad. Um, yeah. And the teacher, it was, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a total douchebag. 
Um, and then I failed geometry because the lady never taught us. She would give us homework on the on like the next day's work without teaching us how to do any of it. Yeah. And like when she did sometimes try and teach, she just wasn't good at it. She was a computer teacher for like 20 years, like before she yeah. threw her in geometry. Like she did not know what she was doing. Like I, rem- we, I remember Eric having that same issue with that same teacher. I was in We were in the same class. Yeah. Um, I actually, for, I, it was either my final or my midterm. I just wrote my name on it and put my head down. Because <laughs> it was one of those like, there's, I don't know how to do any of this. She, you have not taught us any. Of, like I'm not going to bother. So like I yeah. had I had like one of those like remedial math classes in your year and it was fine because what the fuck did I care? Yeah. Like it worked out fine because it was an easy class and I got an A in it because like, I had yeah I had for my first my freshman year math I had a teacher that if you didn't do homework like the homework grade was so important in that class it doesn't matter how good or bad you did on the tests if you didn't do the homework you were gonna fail I had that teacher freshman year sophomore year I breezed through the core math class. Junior year for geometry, I had that same teacher as my freshman year, and she looked at me and she's like, you're "Gonna do homework this time, right?" And I'm like, "If I have time, yeah." <laughs> I'm like, "I don't, I don't want to take my books home. Like, I'm already spending seven hours here, and then you want me to go home and spend another three hours doing homework?" Yeah. So that... If I have, if I have time in class, I will get the homework done. That's the worst part about part about school in general is like. You're there, like, I get, like, they want to give you, like, the extra practice kind of thing, but at the same time, like, no, like, that's that's just unfair yeah. to everybody. And, and it's, like, it's not that I don't believe in homework. I truly believe that homework helps everybody learn. Me, personally, I learned everything in class, and I tested, and I tested with B's and C's without, without studying. I don't know, man, you, you could have probably practiced spelling a little more. Oh, I definitely could have practiced. That was... <laughs> Like I said, they were going to put me in a core English class. Writing, reading, writing, grammar, that stuff, not good. Yeah, You know what's funny? I actually, I failed 11th grade English. Um, mostly just the teacher was a real bitch, and I didn't do, um, I didn't do it the term paper that we were supposed to. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I kind of, I fucked myself there, but it was, it was mostly one of those, like, the teacher was a bitch, and she probably was going to give me a bad grade anyway, because she didn't like me. So I, yeah, because like she had graded me poorly on other things that I actually tried really hard on and I knew weren't bad, um, just based on like I don't she didn't really like anybody, um, but the following year I had my normal twelfth grade English like it wasn't like a like a core class or anything like that it was just regular academic level English um, yeah but then I had to take eleventh grade English and that was like the core version of it yeah. But because it was 11th grade English, half the year they were prepping for that test. The um, I can't remember what it's, what it's called. I so, think it's the HESPA. Yeah, there you go. So I had Miss Bouchard. Yeah. Who I don't know if you ever if you ever had her. Oh, she was my 11th grade uh, uh, teacher. Yeah. All right. For so English. I had, I had had her in 10th grade for English too, which was her first year teaching, and then I had her again senior <laughs> year for 11th. Bless you. So I had her again for se- for 11th grade English in my senior year. And there was one other person in the class that was a senior that, like, same deal as me. So most of the time, she just gave us, like, books. and Like, she, she would tell us to, like, bring a book or grab one off the shelf and just... Yeah. Like, she knew both... Of, like, she, because she had taught us both before, like, she knew that we weren't dumb and we understood what was going on. And that none of what she was doing was going to help us because we weren't taking that test. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, just read, don't disrupt the class, and you'll pass. It's fine. Yeah, that's... That's high school. Such a joke. So was even college. Anyway, anything else you do, Cobb? Uh, no, but there was... There was some news. Um... And some updates and things like that of that nature. So I guess I'm going to start out with two things that you might have actually, like, cared about a little bit. Okay. The the first we actually talked about last week, and Drew and I, like, I was interested, but Drew was shit. Um... I'm guessing, is it Pokemon Go's update with the buddy system? No, fuck that. I haven't played Pokemon Go in a month. Um, I turn it on all the time still. I, I just have no reason to. Like, there's nothing for me to... I don't want to go wandering around looking for Pokemon, so there's no point to playing it. Well, go for a jog. I don't want to. Or go for a walk. I don't want to. I, Get out the house. I don't like being outdoors this time of year. Um, Like, once, like, it gets cooler out, it's not as bad. But, so, I, I've told you before, I think I think we've been talked about on the show, Um, spring and early summer and late summer into fall, I get really bad allergies. Um, maybe, maybe get a new nose. I mean, it's not just my nose, though. It's my eyes, my throat, like, everything. Um, 
hopefully someday they, they go away. And my, my dad actually told me, like, six months ago. I don't know why he never fucking thought this mentioned this in my 30 other fucking years I've been alive. But he's like, yeah, I used to have really bad allergies like that, too. And then, like, early 30s, they, they kind of just went away. And I just kind of looked at him, like, why didn't you ever tell me this before? Like, all these years I've been suffering just thinking this is going to be my entire goddamn life. <laughs> Well, no, yeah, I mean, I used to not have allergies, and now I do get slightly affected seasonally. Yeah, like, mine mine are uh, spectacularly bad. Yeah. Like, like my yeah, eyes will swell shut, and, I, like, they yeah. suck so much. So it's like, I try not to be outside very often, um, just because if, like, I went to, um, I saw Bruce Springsteen, like, three weeks ago, two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Great fucking concert. But that was, like, the first day my allergies started acting bad. So, like, I enjoyed the whole concert, but the whole time, like, my eyes were, were dry and itchy, and, like, my nose was all clogged up. And it would go, or it would go from, like, clogged to running to clogged down. I'm like, make up your fucking mind. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's just one of, like, this time of year to suck. I can't wait till it's over and everything's just dead. And I can... Um, but, no, it, it was poke the, the news I was talking about was Pokemon-related. Okay. Um, they announced last week that they're doing Pokemon Generations. Yes, um, that... I did watch episode one and two. Okay, I, I forgot they came out this week, so I have not watched them yet. I just wanted to see if you had heard about it and what you thought about it. Yeah, I heard about it. I, um, I, I, like I said, I watched episode one and two. They're fun. They're only about three to five minutes long, yeah, not that's, even. That's what they said. It, they're they're going to be the sh- little shorts. They're, they're poop videos. You go take a poop, you turn it on, and you watch it. Um... The first one was, uh, I mean, there's not really spoilers in this. It's, they just, the stories that they tell are stories throughout the generations of the Pokemon. Yeah. Um, episode one starts off with your character catching a Pikachu, and then it follows Pikachu throughout all of the Pokemon generations. Like, fighting different generations of, uh, like, finishers, or not, fin- like, ultimate Pokemon in each generation. It was really oh, neat. Cool. Yeah, because I know in the, the trailer they showed, um, they showed, like, you fighting your rival. Um, I think they showed Giovanni at one point, and I know they showed uh, the Red Gyarados from Generation 2. Yeah, um, Giovanni was Episode 2. They showed, um, like, the raid on, on the gym. Okay. And I, I they, they actually kind of explained what happens with him and Team Rocket afterwards and stuff like that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you kind of got a little bit of that in uh, Pokemon Or, But at the same yeah. time, that was a different story. That wasn't based on the games. That was based on the manga. Based on the game. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's in... I want to say it's in Gold and Silver. Like, Giovanni. Like, they say that, like, he's gone into, like, sooner or whatever. Yeah. Because um, I believe, and I could be wrong about this, in the Japanese version of the game... Um, do you, did you, you played Gold and Silver, right? I believe so. So you might not remember this, but... um. Did you, did you watch the anime? Um, the, 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 like, Pokemon anime or the Pokemon Origins anime? The Pokemon anime, like, the actual, like, uh, like, back God, in the day. I, I, I won't remember it. All right, well. I so really won't. At one point in the anime, Ash gets the, the GS ball. It was, like, okay. that special Pokeball, and no one could open it. They didn't know what it was, and Professor Oak, like, gives it to him to, like, take to different people so they could, like, study yeah. it. Yeah. And I yeah, think I remember that. The first one he goes to, I believe, is when he goes to the Orange Islands and he gives it to the, the lady there. Um, that, that yeah. That's where Brock ends up hanging out with that lady for a while. Um, yeah. And then, then he takes it to the dude in Johto that makes the Pokeballs for you in the game. Um, yeah. So in the game, I'm pretty sure in Japan, that was actually like a, a special item that they got. And there was a little shrine in the forest. And it, you, like, you were supposed to be able to put that ball in there. And that was, I think that's how you were you actually were supposed to get Celebi in that gener- um, Okay. But I think there was something about, like, you got, like, this weird little story element out of it where it showed, like, Giovanni and or something. Okay. I could be getting things mixed up, but I'm almost positive that's what you did get this little flash of Giovanni kind of, like, roughing it, basically, like, getting back to nature or whatever. It was yeah. interesting. But, yeah, I, I thought that that whole generation thing sounded neat. Just because there have been a lot of really cool things throughout the years that you never really see animate. The anime goes in your direction with everything. Mm-hmm. But, um, so the other thing was now that naruto is almost over um because what is it next week or this week is the final two episode and it's going to be an hour long uh next week will not be the final episode but will be the final fight oh, i thought that was the final episode was an hour long episode and like no. week. The, the next episode that will be aired will be next week it'll be an hour long double feature episode whatever you want to call it um 
I don't think it's going to be the last. Okay. Because well, the manga itself took four, three or four mangas for the final fight. Uh, hold on, I'll, I'll find it in a second. Well, it, regardless of all that, um, they've already announced a new anime series. Uh huh. That's going to be based off of the light novels, which I could I could not find the article again that. I, um, but each one of those novels is it like follows a different character. Um, and it sounds like it's they're all going to be post ship it in. So like after this big battle, like sometime down the road. Um, so they said like they'll have one that focuses on like Sasuke and one on Sakura, and they actually it flat out says in there that one of them will be about Naruto's wedding and stuff like that. Um, okay. They said like Gara is in one of them. So lots of different characters from all over the place, and who knows how many how many episodes it'll go on for. Um, but I thought that might interest you. Just the show finally like an issue. Yeah, it's they have um. They have a mini series that takes place after the anime, uh, or after the manga called uh, Baruto. Yeah, that's it with his son and everything. Right? It's yeah, it's about his son and it's. Didn't they do the movie for that already? Uh, that's what they that yeah they did um a, a movie like a Naruto Shippuden movie which is the final movie and then they did Baruto which is after that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, and uh, or no. The last Naruto movie. Yeah, yeah, 2014, I believe. Maybe not. I think I've seen this one. Uh, but yeah, they did Baruto, which was last year in 2015. There's no yeah. English release date for it yet. Yeah, because it's literally called Baruto, Naruto the movie. Yeah, and that's just like it follows his son, and it's the aftermath of everything from... Yeah, because like he, he's Hokage now, and I yeah, think, yeah. I think Sasuke is in charge of his son's like group or whatever. Sasuke, and, Sasuke, and Sakura get together. Yeah, my favorite combination: Naruto and Hinata get together. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I saw that the other day and and typed it in because I figured you would care about that a, at least a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to see like their after afterlife stuff, especially if they if they can do it in a way where like each like little story arc will be about like a different set of characters, so this way they don't have to rely on filler too much. Yeah. Um. um okay. So yeah, Naruto: The Last also takes place after Shippuden. Um, I just haven't watched it yet. I thought I did. I figured I'd seen it already. Uh. That's why yeah. they're releasing movies and shit like that to take place after it when it's not over yet. Well, that's just because it's. It follows the mangas. Oh, that, I, I also saw something, and it, it, I, this is another thing I don't have up at all, but there's going to be um, a, an actual Bleach anime thing, too, like a, a continuation or something. Uh, I haven't heard that. Maybe a movie? Because <laughs> I know they're doing the live-action one, but I saw something about um, an anime, like, something. Like, maybe, like, a miniseries or whatever. Let's see. I just searched in. Um, Do you have Bleach anime one? returns? Yeah. I didn't think it was that bad. It just it just got really bad. Yeah, I turned it. Uh, Inquisitor asking if it'll return in 2016. Bleach anime. Reddit has something. So who knows? That's in, I, I do. I, I would love to see that final arc. Yeah, because I hear it was fantastic. I just I'm not reading that many chapters. Yeah, no. I, that's one of those things where if they're actually if they're going to do something that's actually based on like more of the manga i might watch that because so i basically just skipped all of the filler that they've ever done in that show like, yeah for no other reason than i i just i i took super long breaks like i mean watching it so by the time i got back to it it's like i don't want to watch this it doesn't matter i just want to watch the so let's just jump to that yeah like the um the fillers were cool but yeah they had nothing to do with anything well near the end there where it was like during that like the eisen arc like the big one like where they were they were fighting like Ishigo and, like, his team were in Hollow World, and, like, all the captains were in, like, the town fighting Aizen and his, like, every time they went to filler for that, it was just so fucking bad, because everybody was in this fight, like, they didn't really have other stories they could tell that were going on, like, at that time. Yeah. So, like, like, so the other filler would be, like, between big story arcs, so there was, like, that slowdown where they could, like, fit it in. This was just like, no, like, we're just kind of too caught up, so we just have to fucking just throw these 20 episodes in here. And they're not going to make any sense, and they're going to pull you out of the story, but here you go. So I just, I yeah. would just skip all of those. I, like, when I hit one, I would look and see where, like, the story picked back up and just jump to that episode. Because I didn't, I didn't watch the end of, I didn't even watch that final arc. I had just watched up to the point where he killed Aizen. Um, maybe, like, the episode after that, like, whatever wrapped up that arc completely. Um, 
And then um, I had done that like the year after the anime ended even. Like I just signed up for like a – I signed up for a free month of Crunchyroll and just powered through them. So I was already in like the middle of that. Like, I had watched a bunch of it and then stopped watching it and watched a little bit more. So, I didn't have a, I didn't have a lot left to go, but there was a good chunk to go, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that might be coming back, too. So, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that would be, that would be nice. There's something else that's coming back soon. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? No, Jumanji. Oh, God, I've seen the, I saw the image. Yeah, did you see their names? No. Oh, so let me let me read the character names for. You. So oh, the God. the Rock is Doctor Smolder Bravestone. Oh God. Kevin Hart is Moose Finbar. Jack Black. Oh, Jack Black is Professor Shelley Oberon, and Karen Gillan is Ruby Roundhouse. Interesting. Yeah. So what the fuck they're doing with this movie? No clue. But wow. Um, and it's it's a sequel. Like it's not like a reboot or anything. Yeah. So, sequel. Yeah, it's it's actually a continuation of the original Jumanji. No oh boy. Yeah. That's just I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know what to think. I guess we'll find out next summer. <sighs> Do you have any any news at all, or you want me to just keep um, going? I'm not really. No. Right. Uh, yeah, no. I know. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the new Destiny came out today. Yeah, but I I, don't, I didn't get it, and I doubt you did. I didn't get it. No. Yeah. Um, and uh. Yeah, no, I know Final Fantasy XIV is going to have a big update next week as well, so I might just wait until next week to play fourteen. But yeah, I don't really have much to talk about. Well, um... My, my life's been pretty crazy past week or so. That's fine. I, I, I go through the news, like, morning, and I just kind of, like, hit all the sites and see what happened. Um, yeah. And occasionally, like, if I see something that comes up during the week, I'll, like, it so I don't forget. Um, but, so the South Park, the Fractured But Whole, got delayed. Did it? Yeah, so that's the fifth game in the last month that's been delayed. Yeah. Right? Fourth game? Final Fantasy. I think so. Final Fantasy, Last Guardian, um, that fucking game I can't think of the name of, and... No, this is the fourth one, then. Yeah. Because it was... Final Fantasy got moved to November, Last Guardian got moved to December. Last Guardian is actually supposed to come out the same, like, time as the South Park was supposed to. Like, yeah. I, they weren't the same day, they were the same week. And then... South Park is now just delayed until early 2017, so we don't even have a date for it now. But it was Ubisoft gave like that same like you know we, we want to give the development team time to make the best game they can, you know, the, the generic thing that you get anytime a game's delayed. Uh, which I don't mind like like it's not a huge delay, and like like Final Fantasy and Last Guardian are different stories because those games have been in the works for over a decade. It's one of those if they're not ready now, they're never going to fucking be ready. But like yeah. a, a game like South Park, it's like. Yeah, you know what? If you guys need another four or five months, like whatever, like just do it. Like, I'd rather have a good game come out than a subpar game. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, so that got delayed. Oh, um, Bloodstain: Ritual of the Night. That's the other one. I couldn't think of the name of the Castlevania esque one. That's like, um, I think Any Creates is working on it with um, yeah. the Castlevania guy whose name I can't think of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one will lead to to sometime in 2018. Like, <laughs> real far away. Uh, this one. This is just dumb. So Marvel has their whole bullshit Civil War going on. They killed the Hulk, like, or they killed Bruce Banner, who isn't even the Hulk anymore. And now they're going to make She-Hulk the like Gray Hulk, basically. So like, yeah, like you, you're familiar with the Hulk. He's not like a mindless beast, but he's damn near close. Like he's just all anger and aggression. She-Hulk is actually like fully composed and intelligent and all that, like. She's a lawyer as the Hulk. Like, she doesn't turn back into, like, herself. She just stays She-Hulk all the time. And yeah. for some reason, they're going to do a new book with her where she's just all anger all the time again and, like, loses that kind of part of her. It just, yeah. seems, it just seems dumb. Like, if you want that character, make it the Hulk again. Like, have Bruce Banner become the Hulk again. Because they gave it to a kid who's just just like She-Hulk. Like, he turns into the Hulk and he has complete control over himself. Yeah. So, um, what else was there? All right. So this one is actually kind of interesting. So, Nintendo set the date for the Zelda Breath of the Wild amiibo. Yeah. Which was, like, March 4th, I believe. Um, generally, those things don't come out until, like, either day of a game's release or after a game's release. So, the fact that they have a date of March 4th means that Breath of the Wild is probably going to be out either then or prior to then. And the NX, it's... it's Breath of the Wild is supposed to is you know supposed to launch on both systems Wii U and NX. So that potentially means that the NX is going to be out around March because you figure okay. 
they said Nintendo is saying that the NX will be out in March 2017. Like that's that's the closest we've got until date for anything. And if this amiibo is supposed to be out on March 4th, that definitely falls. Um, I think that's a Saturday, which isn't completely out of the out of the ordinary for Nintendo. Like most of their games release on Fridays, whereas like yeah, other if, companies if, release on Tuesdays, and the Wii used on a Sunday, I believe. Yeah, Saturday or Sunday. I, I think yeah. most Pokemon games release on Sundays too. I don't know yeah. if Sun and Moon do, but I know in the past that they they've released on Sundays. So the console releasing on a Saturday wouldn't be that. Like weird for for Nintendo at least no what if... yeah so that we might that might be the date for it if it doesn't get delayed I've been seeing a lot of rumors that like Nintendo might be, be de- might be delaying the launch of it yeah which would well, suck it gives me it gives me time to uh start saving up for it because I haven't done that yet yeah or it's... or make a decision of Firefly or NX well did you see that like the the Magfest tickets are up over seventy bucks. Oh yeah, I got my ticket already. Oh, yeah, buy, I remember it, you having an issue getting I, them for it. I had uh, a buddy of mine uh, lent me the money that I have to pay him back as soon as I get it, and I got them at sixty-five. They're actually they're almost more than they're almost at seventy-five. I think you had said seventy. Um, last I checked on Twitter, they were twenty-five percent left at seventy dollars. Yeah, that's what that's what I had saw. I think it was Cat posted something on Facebook, like an image yeah. of it. That like from one of their posts that you know they were almost out of seventy dollar pass. I'm like Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it that and this that's the bullshit about this system. Is I bought my ticket this probably a year ago today, last year for last year's convention at at fifty dollars. Yeah, this is a that, from from what you've described it described it. It's a really really shitty system. And, and I'm not the only one that has an issue with it. I'm not. That's but but. My issue with it isn't the fact that I had to pay that it's seventy bucks. I, it, it is worth the money. It's the fact that for me to save up the money to be able to go, and then it becomes more than that. To where then I have to save up more, and then it becomes more than that. Like it's a never-ending cycle. Like I just now barely have the money to either pay my buddy or do like bring the dogs to the vets. I could probably do both, but I want to have some money in the background, so I have to bring my dogs to the vets first yeah no the, uh, i totally get it like um new york comic con did like a similar bullshit thing this year where in order to buy tickets you had to be uh, verified like you had to like do the sign up process beforehand yeah and then the day before t- they weren't telling you when tickets went on sale the day yeah. before they sent you an email that the tickets would be going on sale at like noon the following day um but yeah, then, and it's like it's like, you give me 24 hours to put together 100 bucks? Yeah. What the and, hell is that? Well, not only that, and then you don't, because they because they did it that way, um, like, if you didn't have the account set up and all that fun stuff, you couldn't even buy tickets because you wouldn't have the date. And then if you did happen to buy tickets, you also had to go in and assign to them, basically. So, like, if I was buying tickets, like, I bought tickets for myself and Eric. And yeah. I had to make her one of these accounts, or she couldn't get a ticket. You couldn't you know, buy two tickets on one no, account? I could buy two tickets, but, like, so I bought them both under my name. But then when, when I got, like, the email for it, I had to go in and add her to it. But if I hadn't signed up, signed her up prior to buying tickets, I wouldn't have been allowed to do that. That's, that's yeah. ridiculous. And not only that, when, when tickets went on sale, they threw you in a queue. So it's not even like, it's not even like, you know, buying concert tickets where you just have to fucking go in there and buy them as quickly as you can to get what you want. I had to sit in a queue for three hours before, like, before my turn came up, and I was on there right at twelve o'clock. Like, I was refreshing the page when they went on sale and everything. Yeah. And I wanted to get a three-day pass for me, and then just the Sunday for Erica because she only wanted to go the one day. Um, I ended up being able to get two Sundays and a Friday. Yeah. Because all all the Saturdays were gone, and all the three days were. Gone. Yeah, it's like it's ridiculous how how fast some of these, and it's like like. It's it, these things are sometimes worth these prices, but they just like I and I make the comparison to Firefly. Firefly did it when Paul McCartney was there, and they announced that the tickets are going to go on sale at a pre-sale price on Black Friday at an X amount, and then on Cyber Monday they were going to go officially on sale at a little bit more than the Black Friday price. That's fine, but they didn't tell us that the prices are going to increase based on numbers sold. Until the until Cyber Monday, and their limits were so low based on the amount of attendees, ten thousand for each until they got to the final price point. That's kind of BS. But the thing, the good thing they did 
is they only have three three pr- price points and not nine. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I know how much the tickets are going to cost. I know the tickets are three hundred dollars. So if I know if they get sold out pretty quickly, I'm going to have to pay three hundred dollars. It's reasonable, but for for Magfest, it's like you have seven different price points, and I have to keep figuring out how much I'm going to have to have when I know I'm going to be able to pay. Yep. Because you're not telling us what the price points are. You're not telling us when it's going to go up. You're not telling us how what the number is for each sale point. You're just saying we're at 25% left. Again, I stand true to the they're fudging numbers so that they can increase attendance next year by going somewhere new. Yeah, I mean, that's always possible. Yeah, a lot of, the, a lot of that stuff is just, it's a lot of bullshit and like I get like I get some places like they're they they're trying different systems to see if they work. The problem is like like I have a feeling like if New York does that same system again, um, they're going to have they're they're going to have a lot of really angry people because it like you know first year you know you're going to have issues. There were too many issues and this system was too shitty to keep using it. Like they, and yeah. they were they it's not like they were like up in the prices at all. Like prices were all the same. Still had like caps on like the amount of passes they had for like each day and everything they were doing it to stop people from scalping tickets like that's why you had to have like you had to be registered and everything for your tickets um or for your badges but like it was just it was a clusterfuck because there was like three times where they would they were reopening the sign up thing because people fucked up and didn't understand because it was so convoluted it made no sense yeah um but anyway um i have two other things that i saw that were news ish um the one is Lego Dimensions announced that there's going to be a Knight Rider pack where you get Michael Knight and Kit. And Where's there, that? There's going to be a Lego Dimensions Knight Rider pack um, okay. early next year. So you get Michael nice. Knight and Kit in that. And there's going to be a Batman. Um, I believe a Batman, Lego Batman they're going to be. Um, yeah. Where you're going to get the Will Arnett Lego Batman, which I hope is actually voiced by Will Arnett. Um, you're going to get the Robin from the movie. Like I don't, You've seen the trailer for the Lego Batman movie, right? Uh yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, so you get that Robin, and you'll you'll actually get Batgirl too, which it's the Batgirl like that's in the comics now, like the one with like the the smaller cape and like the boots and the jacket and everything. Okay. So like that's actually kind of a cool pack. Um, plus fucking Knight Rider. Yeah, Knight Rider. I love Knight Rider. Plus I, it, dude, you can put fucking like Gandalf in fucking Kit. That's, that's a thing gonna be you awesome. can do. Or you can put Slimer in it. I can have Slimer driving around in Kit. That's so good. Yeah, I, I really like Lego Dimension. Um, all the new story stuff actually comes out next week. Or not nice. all the new story stuff, but they have new story packs and new character packs. And everything. Yeah. Um, and the the only other thing that I really saw was another like Zelda or another Nintendo related thing. Um, the Pokemon Company, I guess, suggested that the NX is going to be a hybrid, like a handheld console hybrid thing. Yeah. Um, because they made like reference to like making games on the new platform and. Well, yes, like every pla- I actually, I don't think the Wii or the Wii U had a Pokemon game, did it? Um, Wii U had Pokemon Tournament. Does that count? Yeah, it's a Pokemon game. It's not. It's not an. It's not a Pokemon Company game. I don't think. Well, that's the thing. Maybe I, it is, but it's I, still. I don't, I don't think it was Pokemon Company. That's what I meant. Actually, no. I think um the Wii and, had Pokemon Revolution. Yeah, we had Pokemon Revolution. I'm. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think uh Detective Pikachu is a Pokemon game. And that's on Wii U, I believe. Oh, I, you know what? I forgot all about that one. Um, yeah. But anyway, that actually gets to where, like, most of the time those, like, home console games aren't Pokemon. They're, like, weird, not great games a lot of times. Like, you saying Pokemon Snap wasn't great? Pokemon Snap is kind of the, the odd man out there. You saying like, Pokemon Pokemon uh, Coliseum wasn't great? Yeah, neither of the Coliseums were very good. The stadiums were meh. They were just kind of neat because, like, it was the first time you could, like, pop your Pokemon in and see them in, like, 3D and everything. Um, Those games are awesome. And, like, I never heard much about um, the Wii game. Or I haven't heard anything about Detective Pikachu. Did that even come out yet? Uh, I don't know. I'll look. But, like, so the fact that they, they make reference to... I know it comes... Yeah, it came out in February. Uh, I think yeah. it was only in Japan. Um, yeah. But the fact that they made reference to, like, designing games for the new platform... Kind of like, just makes it feel like maybe all those rumors were correct. That it is going to be some sort of weird hybrid where you can like take it with you on the go and shit. Pokemon Tournament is the Pokemon Company publisher. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yep. Oh, good for them. Um, but yeah, that's all the news I had. Um, also, one more. I, d- I did think of it because I think it was Friday that it was released. 
Pokemon Go Plus was released. Oh, yeah, that thing. Um, and I've read up on it, and for those of you that don't know what it is, obviously it's for the Pokemon Go app. You connect it via Bluetooth to your phone. Then you can turn your phone, or you can lock your phone, have the screen off, and use the Pokemon Go Plus to play. So it kind of saves battery life, but at the same time it's using Bluetooth, so it doesn't really. Um, the game will play in the background of your phone um, as you walk across... Um, It'll count your steps, your kilometers, not your steps. So it'll count your distance. So you, that'll work along with the buddy system as well as with hatching eggs. Uh, you can, as you pass pokey stops, it'll vibrate in a certain vibration. And you just touch the button and it'll vibrate for each item you get. And then you can check your phone to see the items. And then if you pass a Pokemon you've already caught, it will vibrate a different time. And you can press the button. You get one shot. So you press the button, they'll throw the Pokeball, it'll vibrate three times, and then it'll either, it'll either glow red if you didn't get it, or green if you did. If it's red, it ran away, you can't try to catch it anymore. If it's green, you got it, and it's in your Poke, your, your bag. And um, the cool thing is, like again, it's all in the background of your phone. The phone can be locked, you don't have to have it on. So it's going to save battery life, but it's also, uh, from what I read, when catching things on the Pokemon Go Plus... Most people have gotten lower level CP Pokemon, uh, but it is every Pokemon that you would encounter as long as you've already caught one of them. Okay, that makes it makes sense. I a pe- the Apple Watch is apparently going to do the same thing for Pokemon Go, or yeah, like you're going to be able to use it for Pokemon Go. You're going to it's going to like alert you. You're going to be able to catch Pokemon on it. Okay, I'm sure like any watch peripheral that you might have within the next year will have accessibility to do a watch function on them for Pokemon Go. Yeah. It's it's probably it might be a third party thing made or it might be a supported third party thing made from the the developer of the watch so that you can do it or something. But yeah, it's I it it just it makes the game easier to play. Like I want it, you can't find it anywhere. You could probably get one on Amazon for three times the price. I was looking earlier and I saw one for ninety five to a hundred bucks and it's thirty five dollars. Um, I want one just so that I can use it for my runs. Like. I don't play when I'm on when I'm running, but if I had it on me, I, I would at least like I'd feel it vibrate and touch the button real quick. Yeah. If I'm wearing it around my wrist, so that whether I catch it or not, I don't care. But I go by if I do three laps around that lake, I'm missing 15 pokey stops altogether or something like that. That's a lot of items that I could be getting. That's a lot of eggs or pokey balls and things like that that I'm missing because I'm just not I'm not playing because I'm jogging. I can't really focus on playing the game. While I'm jogging. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So I do want it, I really do, and it seems neat enough to be worth it, kind of. <laughs> uh, Thirty-five dollars is a bit of a price to pay for a watch that just has um, a button and glows. Yeah, it's, it's not even a watch; or... it's just like an yeah, it's not. Game. Yeah, it doesn't even have a watch. It's a Bluetooth peripheral that you wear around your wrist or on your belt loop or whatever. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. Besides that, I don't think there's really any other news that I can think of. Well, then, I believe that is the show. That better be the show. Um, if you want to email us, you can do so by emailing social at one-quest.com. Uh, email you, us, people. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash onequestonline, or twitter.com slash one underscore quest. Uh, we are on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play Music and any place else podcasts are served. Uh, just search podquest or one quest. You can also find us on our website, www.one-quest.com or www.podquest.club. Um, and I'll probably have a written review of the second episode of Batman up later this week. So that'll be some content on there aside from the podcast. I might try to stream it when I play. I don't know what I'm going to play it. I don't know if I'm... I, I kind of need to run today, but I don't know. Maybe I'll stream it. Who knows? I might stream it on, uh, on uh, Thursday, actually. Yeah. Just last time I streamed it, I streamed it at my first playthrough, which sucked because I missed something. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I might actually stream it Thursday, um, second playthrough. Cause I have two different games. I have one game on the PlayStation and one game on the Xbox. So I'll stream the uh, Xbox version of it and uh, take it in a different direction. I just saw a thing on Facebook. In uh, if you guys are interested in New York City, there's a sex museum. Not New York City, just New York. Not necessarily a city. There's a sex museum that has a bouncy castle called House of Boobs. And looking at this image, there's a bunch of boobs that you can bounce around on. That's interesting. 
Yeah. And that, my friends, is the show. <laughs> Greatest ending ever. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening, and we'll probably be back next week unless something bad happens. Uh, I hope something bad happens. No, I don't. Probably are. You're probably right. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. See ya.